time of year when baby slugs are showing up everywhere and the, the adult slugs are coming out from wherever it was they spent the winter. And so I see lots of banana slugs these days. Banana slugs, it ends up there's two species of banana slugs. I didn't know that here. There are multiple species of banana slugs, but there's two here. One of them is pure yellow and the other is yellow with black marks on it that looks kind of like dead leaves, which is I'm sure why they're that way. And for the longest time, up until actually this last year, I thought there was one species of banana slug and they just had different colorations. It's not true, it's just two different species. And banana slugs are pretty interesting for a number of reasons. Um, one of which is that uh, they're hermaphrodites, like many slugs, maybe all slugs, I don't know. Um, they will have sex for like 12 hours. Um, which I have seen, not the entire 12 hours worth, but I have seen the beginnings and seen the ends. Um, sometimes the, uh, the male part, the penis is, or whatever it's called on a slug, is too big and they, it, they, they, they can't get it back out. And so they chew it off. Um, that's the bad news. The good news is it regrows. Um, and uh, what else about slugs? Uh, they are, I used to know somebody who taught uh, at Humboldt State, uh, he taught some sort of nature class and um, he would sometimes try to trick some of his students into kissing a slug uh, or semi, semi trick them. It wasn't as mean as it sounds. All that happens is, it's very interesting, slugs have anesthetizing, the slime is anesthetizing and in fact, uh, um, the Indians who lived in this region would put them in like a chew of tobacco under their tongue or under their lip, I mean, for a toothache. Um, and uh, what else can I tell you about slugs? That they are, um, lots of creatures eat them. I've seen a Pacific giant salamander once eating, uh, they do eat slugs fairly often, but I've only seen it once. And the slug was, was trying to make itself as big as possible, but I think it was going to lose the, the struggle. Um, uh, some, some slugs are so big that, uh, the traditional, the, the people who lived in the region would actually, um, cook them up and eat them and, uh, raccoons eat them, but because the slug, because the slime is so annoying, what, uh, what the raccoons do first is basically bread them. They bread them in forest stuff. They roll them around in the forest stuff and then pop the whole thing down. Um, and then that's all, that's all interesting. But then the, the reason I really wanted to, to bring up slugs is because they are a significant, uh, contributor to, uh, to decay in this, in this region. So when a leaf falls to the ground, uh, chances are decent. It's a slug that's going to consume it and turn it into poop and which is then consumed by someone and then turned into soil over time. In this biome, the primary agent of converting um, raw materials into soil are, are the fungi. And slugs help a lot, but the fungi are the primary ones. So I actually have an assignment for each of you who is, is listening to this, which is I would like for you to find out in your particular biome what is the primary agent of uh, decomposition and of converting um, dead things into, into soil. In some places it's insects um, and in some places it's fungi, like here it's fungi. Um, so that's my assignment and I wanna tell you one more story about, about this, which is several years ago I became, well, so here's how it started is I, I throw lots of food into the forest all the time. And what I found is that if I throw out certain bones, that they would just sit there. And that kind of surprised me because there are bears in this forest. And I presumed that bears, I mean, they got strong jaws. And I presumed that the bears would, would crack those bones and, and eat them, but they don't. And so this started me on a quest to discover who eats big bones. 
And so I was asking lots of grizzly bear experts. That's not grizzly bears, they're black bears, but grizzly bears are bigger. So I started asking who eats the femurs of, of buffalo and who eats the femurs of big elk and and when a whale carcass washes up on shore who eats the bones of that in the ocean there's these really cool notice when i say cool i have kind of a disgusted look on my face um these really cool um fish and worms who will eat the bones at the bottom of the ocean but on land i was asking a bunch of grizzly bear experts and they said for the most part Grizzly bears don't don't pop the femurs. And so it ends up, I don't know if this is true, and if somebody finds it's not true, tell me. But my understanding is that the primary agent in North America of big bone breakdowns are uh, wind and insects. Anyway, so uh, the question becomes, uh, in your region, who makes the soil? 